Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'm here in front of the South Platte River in Littleton, Colorado, which is more of a river than a stream, but close enough to tell you all about Confluent Platform 5.4. The features I want to tell you about fit neatly into three bins. There are the production stage prerequisites, things when you're going to production you're just going to have to need. There are things associated with operating Kafka after it's in production, uh, what do you need to stay on top of that cluster and that installation. And then there are just the core developer productivity tools, things you need through the whole development process from the beginning through sustaining engineering. Now you can see all those features laid out on this slide here, but I want to take you through those one at a time and just tell you a little bit about each one. First in the production stage prerequisites is role-based access control. Well, why is this necessary? Uh, many of you know precisely and even painfully why it's necessary. But in short, without RBAC, without role-based access control, you're limited to managing authorization through ACLs, access control lists, where there's one principle and that, say, person or program or whatever, can access this topic or write it or read it or do a certain kind of operation. That's fine for small populations of users. It gets completely out of hand once you get into the hundreds of principles. Role-based access control lets you group those principles into roles and then assign privileges to those roles as needed. It's a much more scalable way of managing a large installation. So this gives you granular control of access to things like clusters. Can I connect to the cluster at all? Can I see a topic? Uh, what can a consumer group do? Uh, can I configure a, a connector? All kinds of things like that. You get to control those permissions granularly per role. And this is standardized platform-wide. It's enhanced via the GUI. You have CLI access to it. There are APIs that let you touch this stuff across all of the Confluent Platform components. That's Connect, KSQL DB, Schema Registry, all of those things participate in RBAC, even the broker itself. So this is an absolutely essential feature for managing large installations when you're going to production. Audit logs. Now you might ask, why do we need audit logs? I thought Kafka was a log. Well, yes, Kafka is a log for your events, but what are you doing inside Kafka? What kinds of things are you changing? Is there a consumer group connecting? Are you changing uh, security permissions on some object in the cluster? That's the kind of stuff that you need to log. And for many highly regulated or secure environments, having these audit logs is literally essential. And if the platform doesn't provide it, it's the kind of thing you're going to have to build yourself. And that's not the kind of thing you want to build yourself. It's here now in 5.4. So if you look at that table there, there are samples of the kinds of audit logs you can create. Uh, if somebody is changing security, if they're authorizing uh, something through role-based access control, well, you want to well, log that. You might want to know that that thing is happening. Is somebody creating a topic? Well, that's a big deal. You might want to know, and so that can be logged in the audit log. Even lower level things, like is someone producing? Uh, is somebody, is a consumer group making a request for new messages from topics it's subscribed to? Uh, those are pretty granular, but you can get those involved in audit logging as well. And of course, the logs themselves are obviously stored in Kafka topics, and now that data is available for your analysis. You can run KSQL DB queries on it or do any other sort of computation over those event logs that you want. The cluster level events have been logged to those topics, and you have access to them moving forward for your own analysis and anomaly detection. Also, and I personally find this kind of exciting, for the structure of those events in the audit log, we're using the cloud events standard. That's an emerging uh, kind of event format that uh, we hope sees more adoption, and so we're picking it up here for audit logs. Multi-region clusters. Now, uh, increasingly, this is just a necessity. You can't run all in one availability zone or all in one data center. Uh, the requirements for continuity of operations and availability really are becoming too high for that to be a credible deployment for many enterprises. So we've got existing solutions like Confluent Replicator that can take data in one cluster and move it to another. But multi-region clusters take that up a notch. Let's look at how they do it. The key here is a new kind of replica called an observer. Now, an observer is a replica in that it's collecting messages from the leader and making sure it has them, but it's explicitly asynchronous. So the leader will never wait until an observer has replicated to tell a client that the write was successful. So a regular replica, you may indeed configure a particular producer to wait for that replication to happen. Uh, so you have a higher latency but very available write to that topic. Uh, an observer is explicitly asynchronous. It will never be waited for. And so this is the kind of thing that we put across a high latency link, like to another availability zone or data center. Moreover, observers can be read by consumers. 
So with the ability to do that asynchronous replication and read from those asynchronous replicas, we have a more credible asynchronous multi-region cluster configuration that's possible uh, a little bit more organically than we have traditionally done with Kafka Connect. So this is an exciting step forward for Confluent Platform being able to support multiple data centers in a pretty fluid way. Now why schema validation? If we already have schema registry, why are we adding this? Now the schema registry is an absolutely essential component. If you go to production without it, I can't help you with that kind of self-destructive behavior, right? It really is a thing that you should use. But the contract there is that the producer agrees to check. The producer has to be well behaved and say, hey, schema registry, may I produce this new schema to this topic? A consumer also has to be well behaved and check and say, hey, is this message okay given the version of the schema that I'm expecting to consume? And that's good if everybody behaves well, but what if there is some self-destructive producer or consumer out there who won't play by the rules? Well, it's okay. Now at the broker level, we can have the broker validate that messages in the schema comply with what's in the schema registry. So this is at the broker level, connecting the schema registry, saying, hey, look, is this message going to work? Is it of a valid schema with respect to my expectations? Now let's talk about efficient operations at scale and see what this release has for us. Control Center is the de facto standard for monitoring and managing a Confluent Platform cluster. Now, everybody has their own observability story broadly, right? Everybody's collecting metrics system-wide. There are things that are not Confluent Platform that you care about. So you probably have some kind of management and monitoring story that's not Control Center. But Control Center matters as the purpose-built best way to get some insight into what's going on in your Confluent Platform cluster and the best way to control it in really the most domain-specific way possible. So those features I just talked about, role-based access control, multi-region clusters, schema validation, all those are baked into Control Center now. We have native GUI access to manage all three of those features. We also have simplified monitoring for multi-site replication. And when you're doing multi-site replication, we have simplified monitoring for that in Control Center as well. Remember, Control Center understands how Confluent Platform works. This is not just metrics collection. This is not just uh, getting some JMX M-beans. This really is a purpose-built tool that's trying to present the smartest possible interface to you so you can see what's going on and control what happens in your cluster. We also have an improved cluster overview screen and a new metrics dashboard. The metrics dashboard is really trying to show you everything that you're gonna need to see at a glance to see what's going on with your cluster. Likewise, the cluster overview, you've got the status of everything, including brokers, you can see replicas, you can see partitions, everything you're probably gonna to wanna to glance at, it's right there. Now, tiered storage. If you build event streaming applications the way I think you should, uh, which is that uh, you're using Kafka as a log of events in the system and really a durable and maybe permanent for some value of permanent log of events, then you're going to tend to get a lot of data in your brokers. You're going to retain a lot of data. You're going to produce a lot of data. It's going to live there. Yeah, as, as topic retention period gets small, Kafka approaches being a queue and it's not really supposed to be a queue. It's supposed to be a log, this heart of your event streaming system. And as you do that, well, it gets a little pricey to hold all that data on brokers. We don't want that. So tiered storage is a way of taking data after a certain age and moving it into a cloud object store. This is totally transparent to you. So it'll get moved off the broker. You'll be able to keep your brokers nice and lightweight. So replication and failover and things like that don't take forever. But the data itself still lives in the cloud object store of your choice. And when you need it, we swap it back into the broker. It's totally transparent to you. So of course you will experience different latencies for that tiered data, but that's the whole point. You've got the hot set that needs to be very low latency and maybe an older set where you can afford that minor penalty of swapping it back in. So anybody who's been watching this space for any length of time and been thinking about event streaming and kind of the story that we at Confluent are telling about how to build systems. And, and frankly, this is just what I think what Kafka wants for us as builders of systems to use it as a log of events. Everybody has known this needed to come. So I'm really excited to say that it's here in Confluent Platform 5.4. A lot of these features require broker level changes and we've done that. So 5.4 includes a product called Confluent Server. So this is like the Apache Kafka broker and API compatible with the Apache Kafka broker and data compatible and all that kind of stuff, but it's got extra features. So any of these things I've talked about, role-based access control, schema validation, tiered storage, all of these are broker level changes. And so those are happening in Confluent Server, in the Confluent Platform version of the broker process. And it is quite possible to migrate from Apache Kafka into Confluent Server and from Confluent Server back to Apache Kafka. Now, of course, if you migrate back the other way, you'll lose access to all those great features. 
So we don't think you'll want to, but the point is it's a low risk thing to try out. And with all the great features that we've got now and the things that we'll be able to do in the future, I really think it's something you're gonna wanna do. Now, let's look at developer productivity features. First, there's KSQL DB. Now, you're probably familiar with KSQL, and if you are, KSQL DB is not an entirely new thing. It's a new name and a set of exciting new features for KSQL. And specifically, those features are two things. One, you get Kafka Connect integration. So from KSQL, I can create source and sync connectors with the SQL statement. It's great. I mean, that's you probably want that built into your streaming pipeline definition anyway, so it's really nice to have that configuration built into the language. Also, we have the ability now to query tables. Now, you could query tables before, and streams, of course, and that would give you a continuous stream of records coming out of that streaming table or that, that stream, right? That now is what we call a push query. So that's like the KSQL server pushing those updates, those events to your application, and sometimes that's what you want. But sometimes, say, if you're computing an aggregation, an average over values in a stream, over some window, let's say, you might want to go to a particular ID, like this row, this particular thermostat ID out there, what's the temperature on that thermostat? You can now do that, that's called a pull query. And so this feature unlocks huge potential for KSQL as an application development language. Previously, it was really finding its way into a lot of streaming ETL pipelines and some application uh, applications as well, but now with pull queries, uh, it really comes alive as a part of your application stack. So I strongly encourage you to check that out. We've got some other demos online that give you a deeper preview of those two features. Uh, I encourage you to get your hands dirty with those just as quickly as you can. Also, Confluent Platform 5.4 has Apache Kafka 2.4. So all of the features, the KIPs that got merged and shipped with 2.4 are now a part of Confluent 5.4. There is a video overview of Kafka 2.4 available online, the same sort of thing where we tell you about the, the new features, really kind of kip by kip. Uh, I encourage you to check that out. That's a great overview of what you get in 2.4. I'm not gonna repeat all that here, but the point is it's in Confluent Platform 5.4 and that is good news. So that's a summary of what's available in Confluent Platform 5.4. Of course, there's more. Always check out the release notes, but download it, install it, get building things with it, and let us know what you do.